what is your sort of role profession? So I'm a developmental biologist. I'm at the University of Manchester. So that means I'm studying how bodies grow, very okay. simply. Okay, so you are the expert for what we're going to talk about, or one of the experts, I think. I think that's why I wanted to speak to you. And one of the things we're going to be talking about today, or mainly speaking about, is people with something called DSD, which people used to know of as intersex. That's what there's a great book called Middlesex. Did you read that? I haven't read it. I've read the oh, synopsis. It's so good. It's <laughs> such a good book. And it's like, it's done nothing to do with, it doesn't matter about trans. It's just a really interesting book about somebody. It's like a, what do they call it? A Bundus, Bundus Roman, uh, of building. I can't remember. This is a coming of age novel. That's a better way of saying it. Uh, really, really interesting. Iman Khalif is, well, why don't you tell me who is Iman Khalif? So, Khalif is a boxer who has been competing in the female category at the Paris Olympics. The competition is still ongoing. Um, and there's been some significant controversy around Khalif's eligibility to be in the female category. And typically, we're thinking about two types of athlete. I've dealt a lot with transgender women who are obviously born male and the types of male advantages they might carry through into the female category. But in this case, we're not really discussing gender identity or, or transgender athletes. In this case, it's more a case of um, a DSD, a difference of sex development. Um, and, and these are very typically what would be described as edge cases when you're trying to sort athletes into a fair category that is either the male or the female category these athletes can be quite tricky to organize we have to understand quite a lot about the biology of particular conditions and how that might link to male advantage or in fact if it doesn't link to male advantage at all this is more complicated than i think a lot of people would like it to be is the suggestion um and I don't think it is, but is the suggestion that, that sex is on a, some sort of spectrum? I don't think that's the right framework to take away from people with DSDs. When we think about male and female development, we have some very well-established developmental pathways that start, really that start at fertilization, depending on which sex chromosomes you inherit from dad in the case of um, mammalian species. And, and, this different genetic information triggers a, a male developmental pathway or a female developmental pathway. And nobody ever says that developmental biology is perfect. It's not, you know, there's lots of genes and signaling and tissues moving around and all that kind of thing. Things can go wrong. Things regarding sex development, reproductive anatomy and that kind of thing, they can start to look sometimes, rarely, but sometimes atypical for what we think about the, the male suite of anatomy and the female suite of anatomy. So we do have people that kind of branch away from what would be their healthy development. And, and in that case where we have these DSDs in sport, that really starts to make us think a little bit harder than the mm. typical female XX, male XY division that we, that we've kind of historically, you know, cleaved along. Can you then get a man? So somebody, if we're defining man with gametes or chromosomes who has, say, a womb or a vagina? So you can have male DSDs. So these are DSDs that would affect a baby that would normally be a healthy male and would be born observably male. You can have DSDs that cause a slight branching. For example, the main one that we're probably going to think about with these boxes and maybe we'll talk about here is a DSD called 5-alpha reductase deficiency. So that's basically when baby, who is developing quite happily as a male baby, has a, an enzyme deficiency. So they're missing a protein that's needed for that baby's body to grow a penis. Okay, so everything has been developing as male, very typically. But when it comes to that final stage, developing your external genitalia is very late on in sex development. When it comes to that final stage, there's something missing. And it means that the, the male external genitalia doesn't grow properly. And in that case, babies can start to look, you know, when they're born and midwife or doctor or, you know, mother <laughs> looks at a baby and says, it's a girl that might not necessarily re reflect what's happening mm. internally. When there's a fetus, um, how do they tell, you know, the, oh, it's a boy, it's a girl, and it's very exciting. How do they tell when it's in the womb? 
So it used to be, and still mostly is by ultrasound. Mm. And what you're looking there for is the presence of a penis or the absence of a penis. So when you mm. make a call and say, well, I can see, you know, by this visual <laughs> kind of, you know, um, x-ray specs if you like we can see that well baby's got a penis that probably means almost certainly that they're male and that's congruent you know that's typical of what else is happening internally and then if you don't see that marker you'll make a call that the baby is likely to be female mm, okay so yeah in the womb as well and then you said that they grow quite late the external genitalia yes, so, relatively late so they wouldn't how, how so you would you can't because i've never had kids i don't know how quickly they sort of tell you if it's a girl or boy so, so if you're using an ultrasound, it can be quite late. Mm. Uh, so 18 weeks, something like this. However, we're, we're increasingly moving now. And that's to do with perhaps also the demographics of maternal age and how that's shifting. We're increasingly moving to molecular testing. So you can take a blood sample from mum. And within that blood sample, you can detect fetal DNA. Wow. And you can analyze fetal chromosomes from that DNA. So increasingly at 10 or 12 weeks, we can take a maternal blood sample and understand the sex of the baby. Now we know mum is going to be XX, short of a medical condition. So if we start detecting a Y, we know that baby is a male. Mm -hmm. And if we can never detect a Y in that fetal DNA, we, we make the assumption that baby is female. Okay. And so with this suspected, was it five or six AR? Five, five ARD. Five ARD. Would would this person likely actually have what resembles a vagina? Is it just a, a penis that's sort of inside a little bit? No. So, so when babies are born with this, they can have actually genitalia that, that can look very ambiguous. So in that case, we're talking about something called a micropenis, which is actually a medical description. Um, so it really a very small, but kind of well-developed in terms of structure penis, or we can have something that looks toward, more towards like female anatomy. So that would be when all that tissue is folding, instead of making a penis, it folds in different ways. It starts developing slightly different, just in, in terms of the external genitalia. So that would mean that sometimes you do have babies that look really very typically female, but that's quite unpredictable. Okay. And they so, wouldn't have a uterus and things no, like that? No, no. So everything, if we, if we start at the start of the developmental sequence, we have the inheritance of XY chromosomes, so the inheritance of Y from dad, from the sperm. And then that genetic information is used. The first step is to take two pairs, of, two little balls of tissue. Um, no, pun intended. <laughs> two balls of tissue that are either going to be made you know, told, instructed to turn into testes or to turn into ovaries. So that's the first step. After those structures, either testes or ovaries are made, they start making different hormone environments. And it's those different hormone environments uh -huh. that direct anatomy development downstream of those. So for boys, for males, that would mean you, you don't make a uterus. In fact, you, you get rid of any structure in your body that is the precursor of a uterus. And instead, you promote the development of all the internal plumbing that boys have that girls don't have. I see. 